We're asked to solve the rational inequality and express the solution using inequalities as well as interval notation. The first step to solving a rational inequality is to factor the numerator and denominator, which means in our case, the first step is to factor x squared plus 6x minus 27. Notice the numerator does not factor. So we have the quantity x plus four divided by, the denominator will factor into two binomial factors because the first term is x squared, we have x and x. The terms in the second positions will be the factors of negative 27 that add to positive six, which are positive nine and negative three, giving us a factor of x plus nine and a factor of x minus three. Step two, we now determine the zeros of the numerator and denominator. For the numerator, x plus four is zero when x equals negative four. For the denominator, the quantity x plus nine times the quantity x minus three is zero when x equals negative nine or x equals positive three. Step three, we now plot the zeros on the number line. The zeros of the denominator, which in our case are negative nine and positive three, are always plotted as open points, indicating we have an open point at x equals negative nine and x equals positive three. We plot these as open points to exclude these values as possible solutions because when x equals negative nine or x equals positive three, we have division by zero, which is undefined. And now we plot the zero of the numerator, which can be plotted as an open point or a closed point based upon the inequality. Because the inequality is less than or equal to, because of the equal part, we plot x equals negative four as a closed point. When x equals negative four, the rational expression is equal to zero. Zero less than or equal to zero is true. The closed point indicates negative four is the solution to the rational inequality. From here, notice these three points divide the number line into four subintervals. We now test each interval by selecting test values within each interval. If the test value is true, the entire interval is true and part of the solution. If the test value is false, the entire interval is false and not part of the solution. For the test values, let's use x equals negative 10 on the left. Then let's use x equals negative five, followed by x equals zero, and then finally x equals four. We can select any value in the subinterval as long as it is not an endpoint. And now let's perform the test. Let's begin with x equals negative 10. Let's go ahead and use the factored form of the rational expression. When x is negative 10, the numerator is negative 10 plus four or negative six, divided by the denominator is negative 10 plus nine, which is negative one, times negative 10 minus three is negative 13. Simplifying, we have negative six thirteenths less than or equal to zero, which is true. Any negative value is going to be less than or equal to zero. So because the test value is true, the entire interval is true, and we graph the interval where x is less than negative nine. And now I move to the next test value of x equals negative five. When x is negative five, the numerator is negative five plus four or negative one. The denominator is negative five plus nine, which is four, times negative five minus three is negative eight. Simplifying, we have positive one divided by 32 or 1 32nd, less than or equal to zero, which is false. 1 32nd is not less than zero because it's positive. So because the test value is false, the entire interval is false, we do not graph this subinterval. And now we test x equals zero. When x is zero, we have four divided by the product of nine and negative three which is negative four twenty-sevenths. Negative four twenty-sevenths less than or equal to zero is true. This indicates the entire interval is true. We graph the entire interval from negative four to three, including negative four and not including positive three. And finally, we test x equals four. When x equals four, the numerator is eight. The denominator is 13 times one. This gives us eight thirteenths less than or equal to zero, which is false. A positive fraction is never going to be less than or equal to zero because the test value is false. The entire subinterval on the right, or x greater than three, is also false. So now we have the graph of our solution. 
we now simply need to state the solution using inequalities as well as interval notation. So using inequalities, we have x less than negative nine or x greater than or equal to negative four and less than three. Or using interval notation, on the left we have the open interval from negative infinity to negative nine union, the interval from negative four to three, the interval is closed on negative four or includes negative four, we use a square bracket to the left of negative four, the interval is open or does not include three, we use a parenthesis to the right of three. So now we have the solution expressed three ways, first as a graph and then using inequalities as well as using interval notation. I hope you found this helpful.